Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this two-part episode, I traveled back down to southern Missouri to meet back up with a guest that I think a lot of people will recognize. The Killing Fields has had a long history of paranormal and cryptid activity. Many people have asked, why do we call it the Killing Fields? The best answer for that question is the farmer would always find scattered deer remains and other wildlife around his fields. We are here today to investigate the property and to look for the local Sasquatch clan. We also wanted to follow up with a past BFRO report that is right down the road from the campground. David said he saw two orange orbs coming out of the creek into the fields behind one of his fishing boats next to the woods. He also said he noticed his calf had scratch marks on it and a few days later the same calf went missing. We noticed a lot more tree breaks on the property and there was a strange feeling when we arrived to the area. I invited a few more researchers to help document the activity and to have the company while out in the woods. During our time out there, we experienced a bulk of sudden activity, but we could not put a finger on what was watching us. I have not experienced much activity lately in my local area, and my theory is that they will be around the killing fields this time of year. Let's see if I'm right. As I drive through the area, I leave the Merrimack River and pass the Hoosaw Creek. I go through many portions of the Mark Twain National Forest. There is a ton of forest through here, a lot of logging companies and mining companies. All right, we're driving through the Mark Twain National Forest and it's a pretty big woods. That was a dog that just crossed the road. Yeah, I think it was something white. But um, yeah, we got a lot of woods to go through until we get to David's farm. And um, hopefully we see a Sasquatch on the way, right? All right, we're almost to David's place. And um, I gotta get out and take a whiz, guys. about to enter the conservation area now and uh, we're gonna look for the secret campsite that's hidden off this conservation road but yeah it's really pretty in here very green and lush usually I see deer running around left and right but right now they probably have everything they need it's been raining so they're not thirsty maybe they're not moving around very much I think last night or the night before was a full moon, so um, it's been pretty wild out lately. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tune out, and keep an eye out for this um, hidden road that leads to the campground. I hate driving down this part. This is gonna be the last time I take this car down this road. Nothing against the property owner, I just need to get a truck. There's the gate right there. One's here. So I'm gonna have to walk to David's place. All right, let's... All right, we're here now, and um, I'm gonna walk to David's house because I don't wanna have to drive my car all the way back around and his driveway is like a mile long if not more so we're just gonna walk the 
thousand yards, give or take, and see what David's up to. Blue Jays are going nuts down there, I'm dropping down this ridge. And I'm about to go into the killing fields. I haven't seen it in a while, so I'm pretty curious to see what it looks like. I haven't spooked any deer yet, so it seems pretty quiet out here. But the Blue Jays are going off at something, and I'm about to walk up on it. Looks really green. The grass is growing pretty good this year. Oh, there's a deer right there staring right at me. Oh, those are deer. I thought they were moo cows for a second. There they go. Flashing their white tails. They're going back up that ridge. It's so cool out here. I love seeing deer. The white tailed deer species is one of my favorite. And it's just my favorite animal overall. They're so mysterious and very intelligent creatures. People don't give them the credit that they deserve. You always hear people say, it's just a dumb deer, mindless deer, but they're pretty smart. All right, now we're crossing this creek that pours into the conservation area, and that's where we believe these creatures are coming from, possibly. But yeah, this is an awesome area. Yeah, I think it was faster walking than what it would have been to um, drive all the way around just because the driveway is so rocky and um, it would have took forever. So cutting through the woods I think was the better option and I didn't get eaten by a mountain lion or sasquatch so we're good to go. Looks like Adam found his way out to David's so that's good. He's probably been here longer than me just because he lives closer to the area. But I know he's excited to be out here. He was like a little kid in a candy store. He was like, oh God, yes. But yeah, there's deer all over the place. They're just hiding. Like to me, if I've never been here before, I would say, oh, there's no deer. But if the property owner, David, walked out, all the deer would come out, most likely. But yeah, I'm about 80 yards, well, 100 yards from his house, so we'll be there in a second, guys. That was a long walk, but I think I needed that after two hours of driving. But yeah, this is David's place, and we're going to look for Sasquatch. My chair out there, they done root one of them. Mm totally ripped it up my other chair that i sit in now there was one got up in it and started ripping on it yeah and i went out and i run it off it come no sooner did i run it off it come back down and jumped back in that chair and went to doing it again Damn. and this time i got my whooping stick <laughs> now i see what you mean I whooped that thing all the way back up that post. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I, come, I come in here, I sit back down, and guess what? It almost beat me back to that chair Dude, they, and doing it again. They hiss like cats. Like, they purr like cats. Yeah, though. they smell like them as well. They pee on well, stuff. Well, I just cleaned this porch off this morning. I had a somebody told me, wrote a oh, yeah, comment. Put down one day, every one of them was gone. They just, every one of them disappeared and was gone for about, about three or four months. There wasn't no coons, but there was a rock laying back here on the handrail. Well, we walk out the door and Linda come in and she said, what'd you put that rock in there, out there for? I said, I didn't put no rock out there, what? but it was a little old rock about yay big around sitting right on the handrail. Yeah. And uh, That sounds like Sasquatch. But but now, coons are back. It took them about three or four months, but they're back. Mm. 
also the water faucet gets turned on out here and if we're gone usually it happens when we're gone there'll be a we'll have a creek running down our driveway there <laughs> and when we come home and faucet's been turned on been running all day but go out there and turn it back on it's one of them twist knobs mm -hmm. i told you that my friend from north carolina she's been She's had that happen too, where no, they turn really. on the water faucet. So when she heard you say that, she knew. It's happened several times. Mm -hmm. uh, you had that big rock um, placed in that tree. That was interesting. That's pretty cool. Was that that same rock that was sitting on the stump or whatever? Or on that tire? I think you showed me one day. Yeah, the one on the tire was uh, Shelby's knocking rock. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that one that was in the tree. We found a smaller rock the first time, and we are like, whoa, you know, cool rock. Mm -hmm. And the second time we went down there, it wasn't there. We're like, oh, man, the rock's gone. Yeah. The third time we went down there, we found it, and I think he was with us. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's a heart-shaped rock, and we put it back. And yeah. then a couple of days later, we went back down there. That rock was gone, and the big rock was there. Yeah. And that was like, I thought somebody was messing with me. You know, mm -hmm. it's like no way. Do you have like a specific tree that you would knock on? Yes. Okay, I do too. They'll start leaving stuff when you do That's that. That's where we got that crow's feather. Yeah, yeah right they, there in the tire. They left me a triangle on this tree that I knock on all the time whenever I'm going in and leaving. And one day next to that tree, there was like this sapling. It was broken in the middle, but both ends were stabbed into the ground, and it was like a triangle. But it was twisted at the break. Like I try to replicate it and stab both ends at the ground. It's hard to stab both ends at the ground without snapping it in the middle. So mm -hmm. they're, they're perfectionists. <laughs> Got some artistic to them. But they never replied when I would knock to them. But when I saw that right next to my knocking tree, I was like, yeah. And feathers and stuff like that. You guys found feathers too. Yeah. Yeah. Marble. Visually confirming that they hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So they were like illuminated when they were moving? Well, like the as they was coming up out of the creek, I could see them and I thought, what? They actually looked like two tail lights. Mm -hmm. It's what they looked like. But it, it only lasted just for maybe 10, 12 seconds, 20 seconds. And then they went out. Once they got to the, behind my boat, they went out and then they come it come just one of them come back on i don't know if it was something if it was some kind of creature or whatever it had to been turned to the side to just have one mm. and then it, when it went out that time it didn't come back on but i got to looking yesterday and there's several broken trees over here uh, on the other side of the field mm. and we've been we went around yesterday and got lots of big limbs uh, in our trails. Yeah. It wasn't there the other day. Mm. Uh, we lost a calf that something got. So I think it was a coyote or a cat or something because it, it had physical scars on it where it had been attacked the first time. Mm -hmm. And then it just disappeared. I've been trying to doctor it spray it for flies to keep flies from getting in its sores and couldn't catch it. It was newborn, but I still couldn't catch it. Yeah. And uh, whatever, something's got it now. Because mm -hmm. it's gone. Mm -hmm. And stuff that we get pictures of, mm -hmm. it's only where the deer are. Where we feed the deer, mm. or I have these these uh, mineral blocks out. Mm. That's the only place you get these ore pictures. Yeah, kind of think of it. That's where I've seen them like, on and, the photos. If uh, we'll get them on camera, and also uh -huh. I don't remember getting any of them on video. They've all been on picture. Yeah, I think so. If we do have one on video, maybe it's like one or two. I can't remember. I don't know, but most of mine, all, about all of mine's on on pictures, mm -hmm. and I've got all the most of the cameras all set on videos, except for that one that still works of yours. Mm -hmm. 
and it's up there. I got two cameras since I was getting so much, and that's another thing. Where I was getting all the activity, I put up two cameras, mm. and one of them got stolen up here on top of this hill. Right after I put it up there, it didn't last. Really? It didn't last two days, and it got stolen. Uh, but it's gone. But the other one, I, I bought a new camera and put up there with yours because I was getting so much activity up there. Mm. And since I put them two cameras up, I ain't got nothing other than deer. Yeah. Yeah, I checked one of my trail cameras. I didn't even get a picture of a deer, and it was up for months. Like, the right. activity moved from there up here where I got <clears throat> your camera mm -hmm. to over there on this hill. And now I put them two cameras up there and uh, we did get something, but I deleted it. Uh, but uh, I've got it up here by this. Uh, now the activity is up here by this pine thicket. Yeah. We put a camera up there, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, been that's getting. Where you got hit with that rock? Yeah, that's where I got hit with that rock, and uh, I wanted to see if I could get anything up there from that. You want to hang a recorder up there? Well, I got a camera up there. Yeah. But you can't get no sound on that camera. The yeah. one camera that I had that had sound, it don't work no more now. Mm -hmm. In the last, the last month, I've had three cameras that won't work anymore, and one stolen. So, yeah, yeah, that about eliminates all my old cameras that I had that was working. Mm -hmm. I got. It's a shame you couldn't sell old cameras. I guess you could if you was at flea market. Tank. That's really cool. I like that. Uh, I was checking it out. They, I've only got two sharks in there. <laughs> you probably did. And then I've got a the tequila sunk to the bottom. <laughs> Brown. He's been fighting. He's awful bunged up. <laughs> he's ready to roll. He's a squatcher. No, he's been fighting with the other cat. Uh, there was a female cat showed up. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, them two tomcats and they've been fighting. Yeah. I'll have to come back up later and fill up those water jugs. Okay. I didn't that. want to fill them up on the way down. Uh, them, them broken trees mm -hmm. are along that hill right there next to the field. Yeah. I'm having, I just, here's the thing. I just bush hogged. And every time I bush hog, I get limbs put out in the field mm -hmm. where I bush hog. Yeah. And it, all, it, all it amounts to is I got to go back and take a tractor and push them back up in the woods out of the way, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But whenever I bush hog along the edge of the field, There'll be a, a big old limb. Mm. But I noticed a lot of breaks on the way down. Did like you? the woods is a lot thicker here now because they cleared it up a few years ago, but now it's coming back. But yeah, there's a lot of broken trees on the way down. All the way from like by, by Burnham to here. I did hear what sounded like a wood knock yesterday morning back up there. Mm -hmm. uh, before it was right before daylight. I thought I heard one last night. Just right when I walked outside the door, opened up the screen door, I heard like a loud knock. I don't know if they're warning each other or if like raccoons were taking off or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. They hit uh, like a metal pan or something. Well, if uh, we need to go up there and get your... I was going to go up and bush hog that road so you didn't have to drive through that, all them... That brush coming in. Nah, that road didn't, up it there. didn't do anything to my car. It's just like weeds and stuff. But it wasn't uh, saplings or anything. Yeah. We need to take that camper up there. Yeah. And get it set up. But first, we'll go up and get your. I'll open the gate and 
Adam can take his truck up there. Mm -hmm. Now, what I was going to tell you, if you want to camp down here, I got a plug in to plug the camper in down here. You wouldn't have to listen to the generator. Okay. If you're up there, you're going to listen to that generator. If you want to have a plug in, you know, if you're going to have electric and air conditioning. But, uh, no, no, I'd rather sacrifice the AC just to be in the well, deep, but um, well, it, it can, would be cool to be here too. Use the, that, that predator generator I got, mm -hmm. it'll run that and it's pretty quiet. Okay. But you can't run nothing but the action, you can't run the microwave and run the air conditioner. Okay. Uh, together. Yeah. But I think the plug ins and that kind of stuff be all right. It just takes like uh, uh, several watts to start that air conditioner. Okay. Uh, 1200. 1200? It's a 15.5 watts. He's a camper guy. Yeah. You know, I just told him I've tried to rebuild that uh -huh. other one, that big one down there. But I had it done and we took it up there and he was off it slept <laughs> a little better in it. Yeah. More comfortable. Uh, but, uh, I think Joe's going to come out too, the Ozark Harry man. Uh, He'll be out here later. Well, Adam, you can follow me. Uh, mid, I'll take Miguel up there and we'll unlock the gate and let let him get pulled in and you can kind of set up and come back and get that camper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the deer, the deer off the last night, they couldn't eat. They were back this morning before daylight. Yeah. Standing there looking at the house. I saw a few deer back there. They didn't like my presence, so they they dipped out. You got several turkeys. Yeah, I got a good turkey population this year too. I'm sure it's booming out here. You did have a lot more turkeys until I don't know something's caught a bunch of them. right there. See where my boat is right there? Uh huh. Them two lights that come out of the creek right there behind it. The orange lights. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the same color as the ones that I seen. It was. Yeah, there are two orange ones. Was it two you said? Yeah. Yeah. They come, they what it was is coming up out of the creek and they just come up and they about 12 foot off the ground. Yeah. Whenever they got up there the oh, I was just saying that on my way here that see them turkeys up there on that bank yeah it seems like they want to travel this creek yeah. that's what they're doing they're out there in that field but uh, got several little ones you see that limb out there in the field yeah This is a playground for Sasquatch. For a buffet area. Especially Trail 12. I was wanting to go out to Trail 12 with Joe and Adam and see what we can come up with. Yeah, come up with. Me and Lynn just went through there last week. Yeah. The bottom end of it, when you go in this, right across the road from my place up here. Uh -huh. Uh, where it go, where the trail goes through the creek, you can't get through there with a. You can walk through there, but yeah. it's rolled up. I'm glad I don't have to walk back. It's uphill. The <laughs> it's whole all way. uphill. Yeah. yeah. Here you can see where the creek runs in between the fields and leads into the conservation area near this pond. We believe the Sasquatch are navigating through this creek to get to David's property. 
The creek bottom is fairly deep and it's big enough for a Sasquatch to navigate without being seen. It's covered with trees and brush and it's the perfect place for a predator to ambush its prey. I was worried the grass wouldn't grow too well this year, and then it started raining, so. Yeah, it well, it brown, brown, brown. But the cows didn't like that. No, I was thinking to have to feed hay. Yeah. Under that tree. Yeah, it's gonna die. Oh, he's dead. It's got them, or had them great big waspers. Oh, yeah. And great old big things. Yeah, got they were there last year. Cool. All right, let's go. Does anybody want to buy a 2010 Ford Mustang? It's been around Sasquatch been on a lot of Sasquatch adventures. David's such a nice guy, I really appreciate him. Ooh. Right here, looks good, look at Adam. He looks so geared up, ready to go. You. <laughs> that big of a hill, huh? Oh man, there's, really? some, there's some steep places around here that uh, uh, I would trip and fall and look like a football all the way to the bottom. One day, <laughs> one day we got after a big old buck and he ran off down the hill and I, I said, well, that ain't no problem. I got my four wheeler, I banged off down that hill and then I couldn't come back up. Oh boy. Four wheeler wouldn't pull the hill after I got down there. So I had to ride the four wheeler all the way the, down mm. the valley, down once I got down there, I just had to ride it out. And finally, come right out on the road. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, lucky. It was, uh, I didn't know where I was at most of the time, down there, but. Uh, it's looking good out here. I'm glad we're not getting rain right now. Well, yeah. it looked like, by the weather report, it looked like you was getting rain this morning. Yeah, yeah, we were. We you see too. what them coons has done to my my seat? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they tore it up. Tore the back of it up here. And, ah man, they're destructive. Yeah, they are. Just go straight on back. Tell them to cut it to the right a little bit. Right. That's cool. Where'd you get these at? <laughs> yeah, did you see that one? Just that booger? Yeah, I thought I saw a Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah, good deal. Mm -hmm. Check that down. That's a burger. Oh, yeah. You lay that down, it's like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they warned me about about the bag being there's some ketchup juicy and he said it scared him so bad his crew wanted to leave but they took turns <laughs> sitting in the truck three of them would sit in the truck and watch the guy they had them great big floodlights on that on a with a big generator trailer could be the actual thing but you're not seeing it completely it could be. I thought about that too. Like if they can go invisible, yeah. You're like not seeing them completely, just like that big white one that was down there that I seen down there at the house that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it really wasn't uh, solid the whole way down through there. But whenever it got there to that little telephone thing, it just gone. It yeah. wasn't, you know, just like it hadn't even been there. But. I seen a squatch for like half a second or a full second once. I know it was for sure, but um, it looked like it just disappeared. Like somebody threw dust up in the air and the wind took it. 
Well, I kept that one myself for a long time just because I didn't get a good look at it. I just saw like the silhouette of it in the daytime before it just disappeared. I, I've been erasing <clears throat> them ones that I've been getting pictures of faces and, and bodies of. Mm -hmm. I just erase them anymore uh, rather than show them anything. But the other day in that center hill over there, where I had been getting all the activity where I, where I put the two cameras and one of them got stolen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the cows. Mm -hmm. But I'm not getting no orbs. I'm yeah. not getting no, no nothing. The only places I get pictures like that is on top of these ridges mm -hmm. where I feed the deer. I've noticed that too. And all the weird stuff happens up high on the ridges. On, on top of these ridges. And that's why I put a camera right there, just to see if anything's going on. Yeah, we're, we're up high on a ridge. don't feel like it, but... We yeah, <clears throat> well, you're on the highest point yeah. in this area right here. Uh -huh. we, I was thinking about that one time you took me to that pond by those pines back there. Uh-huh. And that smell. It was either a big buck Well, and there was there. also some more... There was also a lot of uh, structure stuff, too. There was. It, it, you could tell something was in there, living in there. It smelled like an animal for sure. That big pine thicket right over there mm -hmm. that you, I took you to and you started to go in, you didn't go very far and turn around and come back. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big pine thicket. Big, I mean, the trees are big. So the other day I went out to look for satellites or UFOs, whatever, and um, I was walking up the sidewalk through my yard and there was this bright light I can't believe I forgot to tell you guys about this, but there was this bright light right over the tree line. Like, it was almost like it was watching me. And you know how Jupiter or Venus has looked all summer long, like a real bright star? It was three times as bright as that, and big. And it was just right there above the tree line. And I was like, oh, okay. I was staring at it for a good five to 10 minutes. Like, okay, that's a new planet that, that, that I'm seeing now because the stars have kind of shifted to a different spot. You know what I mean? And new ones have popped up. So that's what I thought it was. Well, I started walking back to the house and I was doing something with my phone, messing around and I walked back to that spot. That light was gone. And as I'm walking back to the house, boom, there it is, floating across the sky. And oh. it's way brighter than any satellite. Like satellites look like this faint white light. Like you have to focus into the blackness of the sky to see it. That's how it's always been my whole life. But now like these things are bright. Like. I don't know, like the sun or like a, just like a star like a moving star almost bad enough to light up the, the yard yeah, but it came out of the woods and you know how there's that highway 63 extraterrestrial highway that's the direction it was coming from and they always come from south from the southeast and northwest of missouri like they're going from like the center of the ozarks towards like st louis and once they hit like i-44 they dissipate and fade out like they turn off the lights so if you get too close to uh, highly populated areas. So that guy that was found out here, they found a, a body, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the Van Buren story? Or yes, out that's here? the Van okay. Buren story, which is not very far from where we're at. What exactly happened? So as the hunter's grapevine goes, uh, a fellow hunter was killed, mauled by something. They found his gun, and there was blood on it. And then when the story actually hit the papers, the guy went missing, and he was like 90 yards from where they found his gun mm -hmm. in a spot they already searched. Yeah. It was really, story really kind of weird. Changed, huh? Well, we was right over the hill camping out for rifle season, and it snowed that weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody knew it was going to snow. We would have drove motor home down here if we knew it was going to snow. Yeah. We got up Saturday morning, snow on the ground, and then they're talking about a hunter went missing. It was like on a Tuesday. Was that the Ozark Scenic National Riverway area? Yeah. That's a giant forest. It's just a giant. That's where they released the elk at, I think. They got like a wildlife refugee area. There's a lot of elk in here, too. Yeah. Remember that guy that I interviewed? He lived fairly close to that area. Um, he just saw one walk across the road, but he was talking about how he put these 350 pound hogs back there and the next morning they were gone. 
Oof. Yeah, but the back of his property is that wildlife reserve. No one can hunt in there. The current river runs right through there. It's just right there in his backyard. That's and right. his backyard is like 50 acres of solid forest. Or not 50 acres, 50 miles. 50 solid. miles? Yeah, like square miles. Wow. Yeah. I don't know, I was just putting those lines on Google Earth and just stretching it like across the forest uh -huh. in the backyard and I was like, dude, you got lost. No, it was like 75 miles. It's like, you have to walk 75 miles. But I'm sure there's gravel roads and stuff in between and stuff, but there's like hardly any houses looking on Google Maps. It was just solid woods out there. So where that guy got lost that it's even deeper woods. He must have went in there just wanting to get a trophy buck, not messing around. You know what I mean? He wanted to go to an area where there's no people, bunch of woods, and um, by the river. They said that he possibly shot a deer and left his rifle and everything and crossed the, the creek, which it was extremely cold that weekend. Mm -hmm. Right, there's snow on the ground, and you know if, if he you're shot gonna go a deer, look for your deer, you're gonna take the gun. Well, why didn't they find the deer? If they found his body, where was the deer? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that is a weird story, then. You know, it's like okay. He was doing that, then where's the other part of the puzzle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of strangeness behind that. David Politis picked that story up on the missing 411. I saw that, actually. I had heard about it, and I'm like, wow, that's... I had my doubts about David Politis. I'm like, uh, he might just be, you know, saying Bigfoot are taking his missing people. But the more I started listening to him and listening to the stories and the families that he's interviewed, you know, he's looked at him right in the eye, you know what I mean? It's like, there's something to it. And then once you start placing the connection of the coincidence that happens all throughout North America, you're like, oh. It's a bit alarming. Yeah, it is. It really is. And the fact that people aren't told BS. It's like, hey, let's go for a hike, guys. And yeah. then the guy at the back goes missing and they find him. Yeah. What? Hmm. They must really care about us, huh? All right. Let's go out, do some exploring. We'll see what we can find. Um, we're gonna head down this trail that David created and go closer towards the killing fields and see if we can bounce up any deer, kick up a squatch. Um, as we were walking down there, Adam just filmed his part for his show. We just got about, I don't know, probably about 10 feet and we heard like a rock clack happen down, happen down in that valley. And um, yeah, it sounded like a rock skipping off a tree or something. So we both turned around came back over here turned off the generator and now we're getting ready to go back out there to see what the heck it was we've been hearing twig snap over there since we got here yeah something on that side like when i got here i thought i heard like a sound for a knock something like that and um when we were sitting there with david i didn't talk about that yeah he didn't hear it. i don't think david heard it but i heard it yeah it was a distinct twig snap i mean it was, it was like something stepped on a stick the wind was blowing a little bit but um sounded like an animal yeah because we were both like dog squirrel yeah we both looked and i don't think he heard it but um he was sitting further back than us closer to the generator and he was the one talking yeah but, poor david was like just talking about what he's talking about we're like you hear that <laughs> yeah i did yeah i definitely believe the sasquatch can go invisible i put this on record or there's um paranormal activity associated with sasquatch activity me too but I don't know. I mean, I'm still skeptical, obviously, that they can go invisible. But I've told you about my weird experiences. I mean, I've seen some weird stuff, too. But it's just hard to say, did they move that fast? Or did they, like, disappear, go in some hole in Houdini out of, you know, into another dimension or some shit? They do something. Yeah. They do something. <clears throat> like, you're, you're like me, open-minded about the possibility of it being, mm. actually being possible. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to figure it out, though. See if it's just speed or um, paranormal. Could be both. This is where we got just, I, mean, I don't know if we even got this far and we heard something down there. We were just getting to the tall grass, we didn't quite get into it yet. Yeah, pay attention to, um, man, there's really no birds around. Have you noticed that? There's no birds around. Not even a crow, just bugs. Well, even those are getting kind of quiet. Mm. Yeah, Bigfoot. There's a squash. 
<laughs> Always. <clears throat> yeah, um, if you look on this road, you'll find like big rocks sitting on top of the grass and in spots where he hasn't drove at. I don't know. So I've questioned, you know, if it's the side by side kicking them up, but there's some weird ones. It's hard to say though, because he tosses a lot of them out in the woods too when he sees them. Ooh, you smell that? What is that? Stinks. Yeah. Whoa. You smell that? Something's going on. So. Yeah, the wind's. That's, that's the, upwind. And yeah. That's the sound we heard the rock clack come from. Yeah. Whoa, that smell smells like um, like swine, like pig. Whoa, you smell that? I smell it. That's it's the like direction vinegar. we heard the rock clack. Yeah, that's the direction we heard the rock clack. Whoa, that smells funky. Ain't me. Whoa. That's strong. That is strong. <clears throat> Whoa. Like, look how far we are from camp. You can still see the camper up there. Whoa. Okay, we got to figure out what this is. We got to go that way. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind that David and Linda had a calf go missing. It had tears and bite marks in it. And he was trying to dress it up. And he went back to finish dressing up the cow, or the calf, and it's completely gone. They still haven't found it. So what took it? Yeah, it could be that calf, or it could be what took the calf. It was in the killing field, so. Yeah. What's the killing field known for? Yeah. It was meat eaters. I've never smelt that in the woods before. And we're not Dust. around any farms right now. Like, his farm is way down there. Um. What do you think we should go check? Let's let's go that general direction. Yeah, it seems like the smell's gone. But it was so intense and it kept getting stronger and stronger. That was unusual. I don't smell it anymore. But it came it was coming from the direction that we heard that rock clack at and um the wind is blowing in our face. So whatever is down there, we were able to smell it. I mean, I don't see anything around here, but Adam made a good point that um, David had this little calf go missing not too long ago. So we're going to go down here, investigate, see what we can find. It don't smell like a dead animal, though. It kind of does. Man. It sounds like it's coming from, like, down in there somewhere. Dude, we got to be close to it. Mm, it's down in there. Yeah. You guys give us a wood knock? Whoa. That smell's hitting me right in the face. Whoa, what is that down there? Whoa. Dude. That smell is like really powerful. What do you think? I think it's worth looking around. Just like watch your step for copperheads, rattlesnakes, and everything else that's going to get you. Yeah, yeah, you should be hearing flies. I mean, there are hogs out here. Yeah, I don't think they think that bad, do they? I've never smelled anything like that. Not... Yeah, that was like really intense that time, but it, it comes and goes, right? That smell does. I think there's something falling there. Or something's been here the whole time. Smells good. Yeah, there's gotta be something dead around here. I don't wanna get too far though, cause um, you got your... I don't have my pew pew. Okay, I don't have my I got my fingernails though. Figure it out. I don't smell it anymore. 
Well, we're, we're gonna have to sleep here tonight, so whatever this thing is may come up close to camp. That's a big tree right there. That'd be one that they'd like to hide behind. What, did you hear that over there? Up there? Across. I hear something. Yeah, something took off. Well, we are at the killing fields. Hopefully we're not on the menu. See, if, if just for future reference, if you say, what's that over there? And I'm looking that way, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah. Well, my ears are like radars. I can only hear yeah. stuff up that way. Too hard to film right now. Like all the leaves are real oh. shining bright. Holy crap! Get on I don't want to be downwind of that thing. It's a big one. I wonder what killed it. You think that's what it was? I don't want to go up there and smell no, it right Because I don't smell it right. No, here. I don't smell it right here. But that, that's a dead animal. Yeah, there's nothing in there. There's no more like meat. Well, there's bugs on it still. So. Yeah, I don't want to be around that. Maybe David did that. See that big rock on that? Oh, well, there's a rock on there. Hmm. Kind of a triangle shaped rock. See that? Looks like it's been there for a long time too, with the dirt. Hmm. I don't know, maybe he put it on there? I mean, it was cut by a human at one point. Man, that thing looks like a slice of pizza, doesn't it? Pizza Flintstone delivery pizza. for IC Wiener. Remember that off Futurama when he goes <laughs> to... Uh... <laughs> but it does look like a pepperoni pizza. I got a new season of Futurama. See anything good in there? I've been tussling around in it. Oh yeah, I do see that. It that, does hold water sometimes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, something's been messing around in there. I feel like that kind of looks like a footprint, but it could be a combination of a bunch of footprints. But nothing defined. Yeah, I can't even tell if it's deer. It's I wonder mushroom. if it's like hog. You found a mushroom? Yeah. Where? I've never seen too many mushrooms out here. See it? Oh uh, yeah, I do see it. Cool. What do we got there? There you go. It kind of looks like that over here too. See that? I don't know what it is. I mean, it could be bear. Um, I bet you know an elk could be standing here palming it, trying to get get water. Yeah. But like, see, there's like rocks back there, kind of in a circle. I don't know. Let's see if there's leaves. Not junk. All right. Let's see if there's any leaves underneath. No, it's pretty bare dirt. No, this one's got. Uh, this one's bugs. Really, yeah, this is bugs. Uh, that one's. Uh, same with that one. Huh. Kind of cool. Could be sitting here. Oh, shit. Hang on, don't fall. Okay, you got it. Oh, oh. God, the barns. Like the air open? Yeah. Oh, there's like a den or something here. Talks on. Of one. Yeah. Lost. Are you? Sort of. Yeah. Dude, these trails get you lost. You will get lost out here yeah. very easily. Still to this day, I'll be walking down a trail and be like, oh yeah, I'm going to David's. Next thing I know, the trail ends. I'm in the middle of the woods and you don't want to go back. So it's like, you gotta like. And they look the same. Yeah, they all look the same. And all the hills look the same. Yeah. Wait till you get out in the conservation park. It's like that. <laughs> On a whole bigger level. You have to take a rope, like a like a safety lead. Yeah. <laughs> we just checked out this watering hole, and um, there's some weird marks in there. But we found some rocks back there underneath that cedar tree that looked like they were moved, possibly. And I don't feel like David would have tossed them underneath there. And um, they seem to be pretty fresh. But we want to look further here and then possibly go to trail 12 where that guy had that encounter bigfoot encounter at. And because, tried to get in a trailer yeah because like i said if there's anything around here david probably already seen it because him and linda 
ride the mule all the time all around the property so he would definitely notice if something was different but yeah let's go to the conservation area it does it looks like a break looks old yeah, could be the trees around it are broken too you smell it again don't you Oh, that's a sign, the X. Did you hear that back there, though? That brush? Like, shh, before I said that? I heard something back there. I didn't catch it that time. Yeah. But yeah, we were walking back, and we smelled it. Again. You hear that down there? Down, right? I think. Yeah, you can go down that way. Go left. Alright, we're going to the infamous Trail 12. Let's see if there's any good fit up to it. Hopefully, we find something. I think we will. Yep. There's pretty scary stories on that trail. There we are. Yep. That's 11, this is 12. Okay. Say we park somewhere and then just walk a little bit. Because we don't want to scare everything, you know what I mean? We don't park here. Might have been somewhere around here where they had that encounter. Oh shit, I thought I saw something. Alright, let's go further down this trail and we'll go all the way to the very end. But I just want to spend some time here because if they're in here, that's the only way we're going to find out. You know what I mean? Before we left, though, we heard that loud tree fall or something. Something loud. Thought it was a snake. I wasn't even looking to. Huh. Yeah. Sounded like something was moving around that food plot, didn't it, though? Just now. Yeah. yeah. I thought I'd seen something move. But... Well, hopefully they're here. If they are, they're either going to push down a tree, wood knock, or like do some crazy vocal. Right. We'll hear a thump. Mm. Like people will camp. Yeah. In spots. They left wood there. Dude. Might have to come here. And just light a fire. The fire's already there, you know what I mean? Did you hear something? Yeah. What'd you hear? Twig snap? Oh yeah, I did hear that actually. We've heard that multiple times today. If, if they're at the killing fields, they'll follow us out here. If they're in here, they'll follow us to the killing mm. fields. This will be a better place to ambush us than where we were. We're waiting for us to get away from our escape vehicle. Yeah, there's a bungee strap. We'll have to pick that up. Um, look at all that firewood. We can come here, light a fire, just hang out for like an hour, and then boogie back. Just make sure the fire's put out and stuff. What do you think? Did you Pretty hear that? Back there? Is that a whistle? No. Heard like something like that back there. Did you hear a whistle? That's a bird. Did you hear that? Yeah. I do gotta say though, you hear something? I thought I heard something back there too. This is a squatchy area. <laughs> the further we get away from the truck, I get a little bit more. Yeah. Well, if we do encounter a 12 foot squatch, 
we'll just have to see what it does. Like maybe it'll just stand there. We can film it and then walk off into the woods and it's gone. So. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Make sure there's nothing following us. <laughs> Turn around, there's an eight foot tall dog man sniffing the air. How far is the LBL area from here? Uh, so, the land between the lakes yeah. is well, as soon as you come into Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. So, it's not far from Mississippi. Which no, it's is not. It's not very far from here, really. Yeah. It's all bullcrap aside. <laughs> All right, trail 12 should be, we're on trail 12 right now. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it like wise off right here. This is where me and my friend Patrick found a bone right here in the middle, where it wise off at. Perfect like buck tail bone, like the backbone, vertebrae or whatever. Right there in the middle of the trail. And then when we got back here, we heard some rock clacks and that red helicopter hovered right there where right over where we were hearing the rock clocking or whatever. You know what they were doing. Yeah. Something weird. Somebody's... Man, people have been dumping a lot of shit around here. Yeah. You can see the post right there. Trail 12. There's so many food plots around here. You hear that? Probably a squirrel. But yeah, you're right. Now oh, there's something walking over there. Here. We hear something back here. Kind of in a circle. Let's see what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, this does look like a good spot for footprints. There's some deer tracks right there. Big one too. Yeah. We'll keep going back here a little bit further. And uh, we're gonna try to get to the trail 12 sign and then we're gonna go down that trail to the end of it. It doesn't go too far, but um, we're out in the middle of nowhere, so. Should be pretty good. The sun's starting to get a little bit shorter. You know what I mean? Like, starting to go down a little bit earlier. It's like six, six thirty. Yeah. We're at the end of sun. Did I? Look at that. Raccoons. Bunch of coons. Somebody's drinking Bud Light, dude. Oh no. Yeah. They, they got rid of the evidence though out here in the middle of nowhere. He's drinking Bud Light out here. You know, he's getting into people's coolers. <laughs> Nobody's yeah. gonna believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm special. What'd you find? Ground ducks in an arch. No, I don't know. It just looked, it stuck out a little bit to me. Um, well, here's the cool part. That's not in the ground. 
first one. Right off the road. Either one of them. Yeah. I don't know. Kind of weird. The tip over here is broken. On this one. It's all old stuff. Yeah. You see that? See what I mean? I guess this limb fell and that's what it was, probably. Yeah. There's a lot of deadfall around here. Kind of looks like a footprint. Right there, right here, left foot. Yeah. yeah. Could be. Uh, uh, no, okay, <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Right. I think we were getting more action at David's. I think so. It's yeah. quiet here. Yeah, it's quiet here. There's no animals. Maybe we scared them off. A little green Ford coming up the road. <laughs> Rednecks, run! Got this thing super tight. Okay. I had my GoPro in there, but it wasn't holding it very well. What do you want to do while we're here? You got you put out the tobacco, and you got the the wooden things that you've been smacking together. So yeah, I put out some tobacco because like a peace offering. Uh -huh. Some people say to do that, so I figured I'd try it. Yeah. And then I put out what was left of the French fries I didn't eat. Uh -huh. And I have a top secret wood knocking mechanism. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that thing's been working good. Maybe that's what worked. When I first got here, I told you I did that whoop and then I did a loud wood knock. Pretty loud. Yeah. But we, we were having activity. Now let's get back here. You, you hear that too? I did. I'm not sure Mike got that. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing stuff, little things, but the wind's blowing. Um, I, I see some squatch food here. Who's that? Big ones. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of mushrooms growing in the section of Missouri that I'm from, but I'm not seeing too many out here. But they are around. Um, the Sasquatch would definitely know like which ones are good, you know, which ones are edible. And I believe, you know, they eat all the edible ones. So whatever they eat are the ones that are edible for people. The animals do the same, I think. Like, they only eat the edible stuff. For the most part. We'll stop and listen real quick. This is the part where things go haywire. And it goes from just silence to um, chaos. Okay, so you were talking about my watch malfunctioning while we were at the Mark Twain yeah. the bills uh -huh. when all that paranormal stuff started happening and my watch every five minutes the alarm would go off yeah this watch does not have a snooze button really and this particular this is a cheap watch you can only put two alarms on it and mm -hmm. I didn't think nothing of it and the more it kept going off the more it's like man my watch just keeps I don't know why it keeps doing that yeah but ever since that night this watch has not done that since Okay, I was thinking about that. I was like, I wonder if that thing goes off like that all the time. No, or... dude, I swear to God, it has yeah. not done that since. Two different times something walked in front of the motion light and then turned off my O-light. I told Brittany, I said, you gotta take a look at this thing because the alarm just kept going off every five minutes. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, when I'm at home, maybe I just sleep through that, but she got on there. She's like, you can only put two alarms on here. Hmm. And there is no snooze. There is no snooze. You've got... A reset, a mode, a light, and a step button. Yeah. That's it. It's a cheap watch. Kids mm. got it for me for Christmas. That's why I wear it. Yeah. Creepy. For sure. We'll just have to keep an eye on it and stuff. Make sure we don't hit any trees. We don't have to worry about people or vehicles. There's no one out here, but um, we just don't want to damage the drone or lose it, you know what I mean?
Light it. It's being lit. Get out the gasoline. Cool. All right, cool. Yeah, the generator went out, so um, we're going to have to improvise. We're not living as fancy as we thought. This thing's always a pain to get on right now. And upside down is a trick. <laughs> yeah, we'll set that up. We're going to make mashed potatoes. Boil some water. Mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. I drank out of that one. Today, in Miguel's kitchen. Yeah, I already took you to Sasquatch Cribs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need a lighter. There should be plenty enough water for what we're trying to do. Hopefully this thing don't slide off. Looks pretty good. Yeah. What's it looking like? Looking delicious. Yeah, the idea is to get that smell out there into the forest and hopefully it draws something in. That's what I noticed with your last video. You guys were um, cooking, just having a good time, and you guys got some activity. But yeah. The food, the fire, all the being loud. I don't know why they come in when we're so noisy. Yeah. Well, when people go look for them, go looking for them they don't really get too much but when you're doing stuff like this it seems to be your best bet we're gonna hang this audio recorder where we've had the most action today just because that makes the most sense and um, we have the Olympus 720 DM and I put one of the new fancy Duracell batteries in there so hopefully it'll run a little bit longer than usual so this will be a test with the batteries but right about here is where we heard those sounds. And it smelled the smell. Yeah. You hear that? Those owls? They're already going off. Alright. This thing should turn on around 8.40 p.m. And it'll run until about 4.30 a.m. But yeah, we just heard some owls going off out that way. And, um, yeah, if something does happen, hopefully that thing picks it up. There should be some action tonight. Yeah, I know. I heard that out. Cool. It's starting to get dark. What do you think, Adam? It's hot. Yeah, it's real hot. Storm's coming in. And um, it's hard to leave all the gear out there. But we're out here. We experienced something when we first got here. Or during the day, anyways. So we'll just have to keep working at it. Well, that food you had me cook up, I bet you they're going to be coming in looking for something to eat. Yeah. It's like on night vision. <laughs> Let's sit back just a little bit. Yeah. Connection is really bad out here. The device. Yeah, Action. we got lightning coming up. It's gonna rain in about 40 minutes or so. Or any moment. But yeah, you can see the screen right there. I don't know. What does that look like on night vision? Kind of weird. Don't look out too long. Um, nah, you can't see it.
We haven't heard anything tonight, have we? Not yet. Not since we shut down all the loud stuff. Yeah. Dude, the bugs are wild. Should we do a call? Yeah, oh yeah, I think so. Okay. Joe, do you got parabolic in? I'm gonna do a call. Ready? You guys ready for a call? I want Matt Moneymaker to get mad. I do a call and he don't know. Okay. <laughs> Woo! You guys ever see that episode where he like flips out because um, Bobo did that call and didn't tell him on the walkie talkie? <laughs> Threw all his stuff down. It's like, I've had it. <laughs> Big baby. Yeah. You got an answer? Yeah. I think so. I heard it. That sounds like a messed up owl. Adam, put on the parabolic headphones. Put on these headphones and uh, shoot right here. Do you hear anything? Response from that direction. You got a faint response? What it sounds like. There's just one little you know, it wasn't like a hoo 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 Do it again. Mm -hmm. The moon's up. Storm's coming in. This is a David Politis missing 401 recipe. We're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that parabolic will get to you after a while. Same with like listening to audio. Then you respond to your whoops. Yeah, they would respond to the whoops.